We're continuing our review of SQL. And uh, there's an entire playlist of these videos on YouTube if you're just finding this. So somehow navigate to my account and find my SQL playlist and you'll see all the videos so you can see the ones before this. Constraints. So now we're looking at constraints. And we have this little thing over here we could scroll through and insert data constraints. And so we've seen the constraints on what can be done, rules enforced on data, ensures data validity and data integrity. Those are important words we talked about the first week. Data validity, data integrity, making sure that our data is valid and then also that it is has integrity. So, you know, for price, we said check has to be greater than zero, right? Like we want this price that's validating the data. We can't have negative prices. We're not paying people to take things. And integrity means that, you know, um, the results we get back are complete and accurate. So, you know, constraints help with that. Like make sure that you enter something here. First name has to be there. It can't be null, not null. So table constraints can be applied to the whole table. Column constraints are applied to a column. Data type is a constraint. You can only enter date or int or text in this column, in this field. So column and field are interchangeable, synonymous. Common constraints are not null, unique. All values in a column are different. Primary key uniquely identifies each row or record in a database. References, which is what you use for foreign keys, a foreign key is just like in our movie rental database when we take customer ID and movie ID and put that into rental. Those primary keys from customer table and from movie table get put into the rentals table. A primary key in another table is a foreign key in that table. Okay, It's not the primary key of that table. It's a primary key from another table that's in this table. It's a foreign key. So it references, and we'll see that in a bit. And then check. We saw check today. So let's explore those constraints a little bit. Not null. By default, a column can hold null values by default. So you saw that right here. I inserted, I inserted for this one nothing for that first name. And so that's a null value. I could do select, select star from, what's this, friends where uh, ff first f first is null. So that's a null value. f first is null for record four. We have we used where yet? We haven't, have we? So where allows us to start doing some, you know, hey, just show me everybody who hasn't been to our office in the last six months and who lives in 93730. Right now we could do a campaign, send out postcards to those people who haven't been in for the last six months and live in the rich area, you know? And uh, so the where allows us to filter our data. And we'll see where that's coming up. That's kind of fun and cool. So uh, a null is not the same as no data. Rather, it represents unknown data. There's nothing there. If you do not want a column to have a null value, then you need to define such constraint on this column, specifying that null is now not allowed for that column. A not null constraint is always written as a column constraint. Unique prevents two records from having identical values in a particular column. For example, you might want to prevent two or more people from having the same social security number, right? Uh, SS, int, not null, unique. It's, we're not using it as the primary key, and it has to be unique. Primary key uniquely identifies each record in a table. We know what that is. Primary keys must contain unique values. Only one primary key in a table. Primary keys are unique IDs. We use them to refer to table rows. Uh, primary keys become foreign keys in other tables when creating relations among tables. A primary key column cannot have null values. When multiple fields are used as a primary key, they are called a composite key. So you could have multiple fields be a primary key, and that's a composite key. So create table, primary key, create table, primary key. You can see examples. We're getting pretty familiar with that. References uh, is for... Uh, foreign key, creating relationships between tables. 
Values in a column or a group of columns must match the values appearing in some other row of another table. We say this maintains the referential integrity between two related tables. We saw that when I built the rental database in Access. You know, enforce referential integrity, right? So references allows us to enforce referential integrity. They are called foreign keys because the constraints are foreign, that is, outside the table. Foreign keys are sometimes called a referencing key. So here we have a company table, and imp ID is the primary key of company table, employee. And then we created a department table, and we're, we're saying, hey, which employees in which department? So in this department, we have this employee, and that field references from table company this field. Cool. So we're getting closer. I wonder if I did that up in here, if I used references in our movie rental. Yeah, see? Uh, movie ID. So here's the rentals table. And customer ID references from the customers table, CID. And movie ID references from the movies table, MID. And the data type that's being stored there is still an int because that's what the key was. So that's references, right? Like, wow, sweet. That's how we create those relationships between different uh, tables. So create table rentals, rental ID, int, primary key, not null, customer ID, int, references, customers, CID, movie ID, int, references, movies, and movie ID. For the rentals table, I'm specifying for the rentals table, I'm specifying which fields are going to be in the rentals table. All right, I'm creating a table and I'm using references to do that. Those colors help a little bit. Kind of help me too. So that was references. And then we have check, and we just saw a check today. So as a condition before values entered into a record, checks condition before values entered into a record. If the condition evaluates to false, the record violates the constraint and is not entered into the table. And so we're checking salaries greater than zero. We'll see what operators we can use in another video here pretty soon. But there we're just checking, hey, salaries greater than zero. So that's in our constraint. We have the field name, the data type, constraints, field name, Uh, data type constraint, field name, data type constraint, field name, data type, no constraints, field name, data type, constraint. So check is another constraint. And then you could drop constraints. So alter table, table name, drop constraint, some name. So alter table, table name, drop constraint, some name. To see the constraints, I can see my constraint names here. So I do alter table, table name, drop constraint, and then that constraint name. And then get rid of it. Let's try it. Alter table, resort tickets, drop constraint, and uh, Alter table. Now let's look at the things. I no longer have that constraint. How many people this is like, okay, this is totally easy. It's not hard. I just have to remember what the dang phrases were. Yeah. Right? It's like this is a lot to, how do you say donut in Mexican Spanish? What? Donut. Huh? It's the same? It's not El Donut? <laughs> Yo tengo El Donut. No? Uh, 
That's like the joke. Just put L or law in front of everything. Drop constraints. And then we have null values. So null is a missing value. Oh, uh, so let's just leave this at constraints. And then we'll, didn't we already look at null? Oh, we looked at nulls up there. So I don't know. Uh, I guess this is just looking at null a little bit more. Not null is a constraint. So not null is a constraint. So what are null values? Um, we have uh, in the where thing, we could use is not null or is null. Right, so I did that one with friends. Where's my where? There it is. I did is null. I could also do is not null. And they're the ones that are not null. <clears throat> this should probably be uh, under the where stuff. I'm gonna move that down to the where. Select, where's my where? Where clause, I'm gonna put that down here. I'll put it right above that. And uh, we already know what this is, so I'll take that out. All right, and then we'll learn about select next. So that was uh, all about constraints.